am a professor of world philosophy, religion, and language. Sounds like someone bagged a hunter. I have the hunter's journal. It's only thing I can grab for you. It's only thing that matters. What's the plan? I have two thoughts on this. One is? Magic. Two is? Violence. question that's been posed by every culture and every civilization across the world. The understanding of what is life, when it begins and when it ends, is a question of endless theological debate. As a practitioner of medicine, one would learn that the most useful definition of death is the end of biological life as we understand it. The quest for life is the search for the divine in all of us.
The ghoul is a creature of folklore. Monsters or evil spirits often associated with graveyards and the consuming of human flesh. Classified as the undead, the oldest surviving literature of ghouls, I believe, is 1001 Nights. The term first was used in English folklore in 1786 by William Bockford in the novel Vatic, which describes the ghoul as they would appear in Arabian folklore. The ancient Arabian folklore, the ghoul, literal translation being demon, dwell in burial grounds and other uninhabited places. The ghoul is a fiendish type of Dujen, believed to be a siren of sorts. The ghoul is a desert-dwelling, shape-shifting demon that can assume the guise of humans or animals, most preferably the hyena. It lures unwary people into the desert waste or abandoned places to slay and devour them. The creature also preys upon children, drinks blood, steals coin, and eats the fallen, then takes the form of the person it had most recently devoured. In Arabic language, the female form of ghoul is gulha. Nice shirt.
You human? Yep, you. Yeah. Alright, let's go. Let's get going. The term zombie is widely misused. Zombies are featured widely in Hittian rural folklore as the dead having been physically revived through the art of necromancy via use of bakur magic. Zombies must remain under the control of their bakur for they possess no will of their own.
It's clear. I don't see anything. Let's set up shop here.
You're the only two left. I have no idea. This is not going to help us in any way. I wouldn't learn this till several months later. But it turns out that Neko may have been onto something. When he referred to the possibility that the undead were created through scientific means. It appears that there is a type of worm in the world, referred to as the green banded board sack, or maybe brood sack. This worm is capable of jumping between bodies, climbing into the brain of any animal in which it has been introduced, and taking control of the central nervous system taking away all signs of life of the original creature and instead replacing it with the will of the worm itself. Another example of these terrifying mind-eating maggots is the hair worm, which can be found commonly in grasshoppers performing the same sadistic cycle of life with an added twist. After infecting the grasshopper and reaching maturity, it convinces the grasshopper to return to the water in which the worm had been born and drowned itself. And at last, there is a mold with these same properties. Toxoplasma gondia and unlike the hair worm, this is capable of surviving and multiplying inside the human mind. Regardless of which fiendish parasite or magic resulted in this last several months worth of destruction, it seems like it was inspired by the bitter winter cold of the previous year. And as the warm sun rises over the long summer days, the parasite or the parasite weakens. The zombies return back to whichever graves they crawled out of. I can only be thankful for this.